There were some people out there who thought Aaron Jones might be coming to Pittsburgh. Well, four years, $48 million later, that never was going to happen. He re-signs with Green Bay, but there are a lot of other guys on the market. So, Will Graves, let's start with you on this one. The Steelers likely will not bring back James Conner. They need somebody. Short of going out and getting a Najee Harris or a Travis Etienne on the draft, let's say, let's just take that out of the conversation for a minute. If you had to choose somebody in the free agent market right now, who would it be knowing that Jones is no longer out there and was never really an option? That's cheap. Yeah. I mean, went, well, they have I to mean, go cheap, right? I mean, look, I'm look, Pomp, I'm looking at the list right now. There's a name that pops out, and his name is Le'Veon Bell. <laughs> I mean, and, and we could sit here and we can joke about it. And look, it would be good for Chris's business. It would, I'm sure his, his phones would be lit up for weeks if Lev came back. But I think, you know, a more reasonable, I look, he doesn't have a lot of tread. He's been basically hurt it for two, two, three years. That being said, a Duke Johnson might be a guy that they can maybe afford. Uh, you know, maybe, I don't know what Gurley's got. You look at the injury history, he might think he's valued more than he actually is. But I mean, their options are limited. And it just, I think their best option is maybe draft somebody and, and have Benny be the guy or the guy that they draft be the guy. I'd rather them spend their money on offensive linemen if they had any at all. <laughs> I guess Mark, I'm do you going want next this week? one? Uh, no, you know what? I, I was being courteous. I'll take it. I was going to go last year. I was going to bat last, and I was going to start yelling about this. You have to take <laughs> somebody that you think is going to fit whatever your offense is going to look like next year. So do you believe that you're going to run the ball, like actually get down and run the ball like the owner has said for the last two years you want to do? Or do you think that this is probably going to morph at some point in the season into Ben Roethlisberger throws a whole ton of passes? If you believe the latter, and I do, by the way, then you need a Duke Johnson, maybe a Kenyon Drake, somebody like that. Although Kenyon Drake has done enough in the desert that I don't think he's going to come cheap. Like Philip Lindsay, he's an unrestricted free agent out of Denver. Do you want a guy like that? I mean, the real, the real truth of the running backs and free agency story is there's very few that look like automatic good fits that are also going to be affordable. So I would just say your best chance is to draft somebody like Javante Williams in the third round. Third round? I'd take that in the like late first maybe but um oh you're they, overvaluing they, running backs mark yeah that's where i'm going right now here is the exact point i'm going at is there's such a devaluation of running backs that a lot of these unrestricted free agents it's not going to sign for a lot you look last year you got about three guys that signed above a million bucks and the other ones waited they had to wait until april for maybe a little bit more than the million dollars they signed and you had some decent running backs out there that nobody wanted because you don't want a running back on his second contract that's when they start going downhill so they're not going to pay him a lot of money my thing is you, you they got time here see what happens in the draft see if they can get javante williams or anybody michael carter anybody other than in the first round because i think tight end i mean i think a tackle should be taken in the first round then they can revalue revisit this sometime in early may and guys like wayne gallman from the giants i like him a lot restricted free agent a guy that's only it's going to die for a job at that point for a million bucks that's the guy you need to look for all right the nfl is always looking to improve things like over time if they can they've gone through different things little tweaks here and there but the Baltimore Ravens, when the owners meeting and the competition committee get together, has an idea. They're going to call this the spot and choose overtime. So that is, for those of you who haven't seen it, it means it kind of takes the pressure out the coin flip and who, who gets an advantage that way. One team, whoever wins the toss, chooses a spot. You can spot the ball anywhere you want. The other team must choose if they want to go on offense or go on defense. So if you want to put it at the one-yard line, for example, that team has to decide which way they want to go. Stop a team or take it if you're Pat Mahomes and try to go 99 yards. First score wins. Will, do you like this? Um, I like the idea that they're open, that they're trying new things. But uh, I think there would have to be some sort of limitations in there. I, I think the one is, is too much. But I think that from 10 to 10, anywhere inside, I'd be open to that. But I think, I mean, the one-yard line, I mean, let, when you look at the play, the percentages – you know, and if it's first score wins, not first touchdown wins, that's just too, it's too limiting to, to whoever gets stuck playing offense in that situation. I don't mind it if it's first this. touchdown wins. Oh, sorry, Mark, I did it again. Okay. Uh, I don't mind if it's first touchdown <laughs> wins and you do this spotting situation here. Um, but the bottom line for me is it's going to make, it's going to be a complete mess either way you do it. People are going to be unhappy. It is going to bring more strategy and more analytics, like average drive that starts here yields this on average. It's going to make coaches know their teams and trust their teams better. 
All that's a roundabout way of saying Mike Tomlin is probably going to be pretty bad at it, so I don't want it to happen because it'll blow up in the Steelers' faces. That's where I was getting at a little bit, Chris. I mean, we're talking about coaches in the NFL that really won't go for it in fourth and about this much, and now we're going to try to make them make a choice between, you know, maybe the 15-yard line or something like that. No, they're going to have an analytics person that says, this is the ultimate 50-50% chance if it's a 37-and-a-half-yard line, and that's what they're going to figure out, and every single coach is going to go there. Maybe you'll have one or two outliers, but, man, if you're not going for it on fourth and an inch, you know, in the third quarter or whatever, why are these guys going to take any chance in overtime? I think I think what Harbaugh's thinking is he got a really good kicker and maybe they can steal a win or two here. He's kind of a shady character in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, well, they need 23 other votes to make sure that happens and passes likely will not. So they'll be stuck with the same system they have unless they make some tweaks and changes to that. We're going to take a break. When we come back, the Penguins are hot. They're right now moving on up. They're a point out of second, closing in on first. But they have a GM who might be willing to move some pieces to get some more players in their system. What should Ron Hextall do with the trade deadline? That's next right here on the number one Cochrane Sports Show.